G'day, welcome to Pay It Forward. Now I have been having a lot of requests over the last couple of weeks for some patterns and projects which don't use any joints, no hardware at all, and uh, I've been wanting to create a, a beautiful little patchwork chicken of this style, a more realistic style for a while now. So I thought perfect opportunity. And we're just bringing it back a little. We've done a couple of tricky patterns, the last couple of ones. So this is just pairing it back a little bit and it's nice to do something a little easier now and then. Who am I kidding? I want a little rest, <laughs> but I'm sure some of you do too. This is really quick and easy and it's fantastic stash buster. So you can dive in and use up all your scraps. Now I've gone for really realistic sort of colors there. Um, but of course you can make really funky chickens that are purple and somebody please make purple ones and orange ones. So really exciting. And this is great for beginners as well. So you'll just need your free pattern and it is in the description box below. I'll put it number one in the comments for you. Also, you just need to print those pattern templates out on your own home printer and you will uh, find there's a measuring bar on the side to make sure you're getting those pattern pieces right. Generally set your printer to be printing at actual size or printing at A4 size. So always chat to me in the comments if you're having any problems with printing. It does vary the world over. So, and remember I always include all of your seam allowances within my patterns. It just makes it so much easier for everybody. So let's get busy making our little chicken. So let's have a look at what we're going to need to make our chicken. So you can use pretty much any fabrics for this one, so long as they're stable. Um, and so I have just my quilting cottons I'm making mine out of, and I've got those. All of my pattern pieces are interfaced with fusible woven cotton interfacing. And these are the two side body pieces. And I'm going for the black and red and white look here rather than my, I would normally go for that very little brown hen look, but I thought I would step outside my box. So on top of that, we're going to be needing a hood section. So the hood sections have fusible webbing applied to the back and we need both sides for those. And I've gone for that black to contrast and it's really going to show up my face detailing work there and we need a center front gusset we see just a little bit of a center front gusset and uh, good afternoon jeremiah nice to have you with us so we've got um i've gone for a little stripy black and white there keeping in with all those tones this is a really a patchwork um project here so you can really mix up the colors and prints so also for the center body gusset that comes up right underneath the tail i've got that same print there that's going to show up nicely at the back i also like to add a bit of a trim around the top of that uh, tail there just something you can add lace you could even make yourself own, your own ruffle a little bit of a ruffle from one of your fabrics and pop that into the seam as well i just think that little scalloped edge there of that black braid will look pretty and then we're going to need our face pieces. So our face pieces are our little wattle pieces. And this one is already done with its blanket stitching. So you can see how that's going to look. And we need our crest pieces. Now the wattle pieces are cut from double felt. That's two pieces of felt joined together with fusible webbing. I've got a video that talks to you about preparing your felt for sewing. It's a good one to watch. Um, I'll put the link up the top there for you. You can check that one out. So that the two wattle pieces are cut from double felt and then your crest pieces, you need two of those and they are cut from felt with fusible webbing applied to the back. We're going to do something a bit tricky with that one there. So you can see that will sit up the top there, all the way around like that and then we have our beak pieces so our beak pieces are also cut from felt and they have fusible webbing applied too so you've got your two top beak pieces and your two lower beak pieces here pop those aside there and you're going to need some eyes now you can use buttons shank buttons work best because we want to pull them in I'm using teddy bear eyes glass teddy bear eyes and I'm using that nice smoked topaz there these are a little eight to nine millimeter um, eye there. You don't want them much bigger than that because you'll lose that realistic look. 
um, but certainly you can use safety eyes although um, safety eyes don't pull in the way that uh, these ones do so I would stick with either a shank button or the proper eyes like this and then we move on to the wings so I move these out the way so we can have a good look at the wings so these are our, I've got two prepared so this is uh, how our wings are going to look I've used different colors on each side and these are going to be positioned on your little hen just like that so you can do all sorts of detailing to these wings so what you'll need are your front and your back wing pieces so this is for our, our top wing piece and our underside wing piece front and back pieces again they are interfaced and uh, I've just mixed up some fabrics there again following that black and white theme and for each of them you need either some fusible wadding or I just use a piece of felt with um, fusible web applied so that I can iron that to one of those pieces and it just gives those those wings a little bit of volume there and you can see I've brought in the red there so if we get any kind of a uh, little bit of color showing there it's going to tie in with the rest of my project so we are going to be filling with polyester filling but with this project I definitely like to add some weight so I'm actually just using some dry white rice um, you can use some uh, fine aquarium gravel will work you may have the proper um, plastic pellets um, whatever you like uh, rice works just fine for me and you'll need your extra strong threads and uh, your basic sewing requirements so let's begin with our side body pieces so the first thing we're going to do which I do on all of my projects is I've sewn a zigzag stitch a close satin stitch on the edge between those two opening marks this is our opening and it just makes it stay stays those edges it stops them stretching and when we go to close that opening at the end it's much easier to do because we haven't got any fraying there so our very first step then is to go ahead and add our hood pieces by removing that backing paper and we're going to line that one up exactly over the top there and we're going to press those on with a hot iron and a protective cloth and then we just need to stitch that lower edge now there's a lot of ways you can do this I'm going to do mine on the machine you can do just a, a satin stitch a zigzag stitch you may have decorative stitches and you might want to do a couple of rows around that next section there using different colored threads depending on what uh, colors your hen is going to be um, but I'm going to get those pressed and then just this lower edge just stitched into place you could also do it by hand with a blanket applique stitch but this is a quick little project so I'm going to aim to show you everything on the machine so I've actually gone for a nice little it's a machine herringbone stitch there and I've done that in the red just to tie everything in with my three colors there it's just a simple way of adding a bit of detail and bringing some color in as I said you can do all sorts here on this neckline so now we're going to add that center gusset the easiest way to do this is to do it one side at a time so we've got on your pattern pieces you've got a little mark there on your on your pattern templates make sure that you transfer all of your marks and we're going to take the point of our center gusset piece and we're going to line it up to extend just a little way beyond that mark so that the point is at the seam allowance our seam allowance is about four millimeters so I'm going to use my clips to clip that in place and line up the rest of that front it should line up beautifully all the way down to the bottom there right down to that base And we're just going to stitch that one into place but we start our stitching about four millimeters from the end uh, so that there's room for our other side to be stitched in as well and then we're going to sew that center seam so first up but starting off here put a little mark there if that helps you and we're going to stitch that center front seam all the way down to the base four millimeters and sew that one two times 
There we go, so there's the first side stitched into place and you can see where I started there just a little way from the top and so now we can go ahead and we can join the other side on again right sides together and we're going to be able to line that up at the base using my clips again and you'll find that will line up with that top section and there's just enough room there for you to sew that one in. You can see that we can flatten that and we're going to be able to stitch right to that point which will close that perfectly. So do exactly the same as we did with the other side sewing that seam two times. You can see there that one's sewn up perfectly to that point. That's how we get a perfect point at the front there. So now because that's exact this little chin seam will be perfectly in line too. So now we just need to stitch from the start here from your little mark up until the underside of that chin there. Again sew that one two times. There we go, so once I've turned that through, always turn it through and roll those seams out really well, both sides, and you can see we've got that beautiful front with that perfect little point there. So our next step, pop that one back through again, and we're going to sew our centre back seam, and we're going to do that in the two parts and leave that back opening. So you've got your little marks ready on your pattern piece where you've stitched that zigzag between and we're just going to stitch from the top of what will be the beak around to this point. Make sure you back and forth at the start of that opening and then we continue on just from this end of the opening up to the top of the tail there and again sew that one two times and make sure you back and forth on each of those start and finishes of those openings because when we go to add filling we're going to be putting some pressure on there. So now we're ready to add our centre body gusset into the base of our chicken and what I've do done first is this more narrow edge this is our tail section so I've added a little piece of my scalloped lace there so that when I turn that one through that's going to pop up around the tail edge there it's just a nice little finish so any little lace trim will do you can even make a ruffle out of some of your fabric and add that there just make sure that you've got it you can place it around the top edge there go down as far as you like just make sure that it's even and it's right sides together and we have I've just stitched that just within that seam allowance so it's all there in place so now we're going to take what is the front, which is the larger end, and we've got a mark there on our template, on our pattern piece, and we've got a mark on the centre front there of our gusset, and we're going to line those two up. Now this can all be sewn on the machine, but I do like to hand sew it into place first with a tacking stitch. It just really helps. So I'm taking my pin through both of those, layers and then take a little bit up on the other side and pushing my pen head all the way down. So now we're going to come up to the other side and I've opened out that seam at the top there, that centre back seam, just made that nice and flat and now I can line up my centre mark where my lace is and I'm going to go through it, the seam allowance and straight through the centre of that seam. Make sure you're going straight through the middle. Now while I'm here, I'm going to start lining up those sides. So on this back section, the first two pins I take this way, flat. Because that tail section does sit up quite flat. Pin either side and then I'm going to go back to my front and I'm going to pin all the way through, flip it over, take some up on the other side. So this side I'm pinning in that 3D fashion. And I'm 
pushing my seams flat to the side, either side. Again, through all the layers and push my pin head all the way down. Back here. And now we're going to start pinning 3D on this one, which means through all the layers, flip it over, take a little bit of your fabric and pin head all the way down. So you can see that I'm going from side to side and by doing that, I'm going to make sure that it's all being pinned in evenly. If you've kept to your seam allowances, this little section should fit absolutely beautifully. So I'm going to continue pinning that one in, matching everything up, that nice curve, right the way around. I have gone ahead now and I have overcast with a tacking stitch that gusset panel in. Now do take the time to do this because it will make all the difference in your finished result. Um, it's definitely worth it because trying to sew that whole section in with all of those curves with just pins is just treacherous. So much better to do this and now it's all nicely in place. Very easy to tuck that one under the machine and stitch all the way around. Make sure that you're sewing on that base piece. Don't try and sew it from this side. So same four millimeter seam allowance and I sew that one two times. Now once you have that base sewn in, you can go ahead and turn that one through. Make sure you roll out all of your seams on the whole project. You can see how nice that little lace pieces come up there on the underside of that tail. So the next thing I do is I bring the mouth section, I bring the top seam and the lower chin seam together, flatten that out and I just overcast stitch that closed. It won't be seen because we cover that with the beak, but we don't want any stuffing escaping there. And so now we're ready to fill that body. As I said, this one works really well with a bit of weight in it. So I will be adding my rice at this stage. I've made a temporary little funnel there, ready to pour my rice in. And I would say the amount I have there is probably about two metric cups. Um, you can add more or less, totally up to you. So I will pop that in there. Also, if you're concerned about the rice um, not staying dry, I always keep my little silica gel um, uh, pouches that come with shoes and lots of your goods that uh, are packaged. I drop one of those in there with the rice and that keeps um, all the moisture out of the way. So I'm going to get that one filled up and then I'm going to top up the rest with my polyester filling and I'm really going to pack that head section nice and firm and that tail section nice and firm. Our lovely chicken is starting to take shape. You can see they're all beautifully filled out there. Nice and firm and I've gone ahead and tucked that filling in with my wool felting needle and made sure that all this section through here is nice and firm and up into that tail section. So now I've got everything out of the way ready to close my opening. So I've got my straight, my normal needle and I've also got my, cur uh, my curved needle ready to go which makes this job a whole lot easier. Now we're using a ladder stitch to close this back opening which is just standard. Now I have a video that shows you how to sew the ladder stitch. I will put the link at the top there for you. I'm going to show you how to get started here. Do check out my basic sewing stitch videos. They're very, very useful. So I'm using extra strong thread with a whole pile of knots on the end there. A great big bunch there. So we're going to come in right where that seam starts to open out and take our needle through at the seam allowance, which of course is four millimeters. And you may need to lever that needle out to get that through, which is why a curved needle is going to be really handy. I just like to make that first stitch with a normal needle. So now I'm going to take that one off, switch over to my curved needle. And you may have had this curved needle in one of your multi packs for years and thought, when will I ever use that? Well, this is where they're useful. So our next stitch, we travel straight across parallel and we're going to tuck that needle in and travel down just one stitch, which is much easier to do with a curved needle there. 
So try and keep your stitches nice and small. I'm still working within that seam allowance. And there's my first stitch across. Give that one a pull and that will pull in. So now we travel back to the other side again and we go back into the first hole that we made where that knot is. And we travel down the same distance on the opposite side. Just nice small stitches. Pull that one through and give it a squeeze and that will start to pull in. Cross over the other side and each time we're going back into that same hole that we just came out of. And making sure that the stitches, the stitch length is the same either side. As I go, I'm constantly squeezing that seam and pulling it in. So I've traveled back and forth all the way down there. I've got right down to the bottom there. I'm just gonna show you how I finish off. So this is my last stitch to go in. You can see that's quite a neat invisible finish. And I'm gonna take my final stitch back into that last hole. And I'm going to come out somewhere on that seam line. I'm right out on that seam line there, pulled that in so that last stitch is nice and tight and I'm just going to take a tiny stitch within that seam. Just to catch a little bit of that seam. Pull that one through, make sure that it goes through the loop so that it creates a little knot on the surface. And then dive right back in. And out again. It's helpful to have your forceps ready for this. Pull that through and that little knot disappears into that seam and we can just snip that thread in. I don't always show you that finishing part but I hope that helps. So you can see there, lovely little finish and nice little back line there to our chicken. So now we can move ahead and start work on our little face details. So let's start with the comb section. Now remember we had fusible webbing on the back of those felt pieces. Take off that fusible webbing and we're going to put them together, glued side together. So right sides facing outwards because we're not turning this through. And what we're going to do is we're just going to sew a seam. You can see where there's a little point there and then it comes in. This is the seam allowance here that starts here. And we're just going to stitch in red to match just this lower curve. And it's, it is a four millimeter seam allowance. And then we're gonna open that seam out nice and flat. I have that seam stitched now, and now I can open up that seam and finger press it completely open. And that's going to allow us to attach it to the head in a really easy way. So once that seam is open, we're going to be able to line that up with the top of the head and we've got something to pin either side and a space to stitch either side. Makes it very easy to pop that comb in place. So what we have to do now is take this to the iron. Remember we've got that fusible webbing in there and we can press, be very careful to only press this top edge because we want this to stay open. So just the top edge with a protective cloth ready for our blanket stitching. Now that I have that top section fused there, I'm going to take my, I've got extra strong thread and I'm using pink and a lighter color works best around this comb and wattle. Um, it just really outlines it well. 
I'm using extra strong thread. You could use um, your stranded cotton if you like. I would use two strands if you're using stranded embroidery floss. So I've got a knot in the end, single strand, and I'm just going to come in from the underneath because we're not going to see that and come out between those layers there right on that seam line. Pull that one through and I'm just going to sew a tiny blanket stitch around the whole top edge. So blanket stitch is just simply taking your needle through all the layers and bringing your needle out through the thread loop each time and pulling that one in. So that's going to give me a lovely little binding stitch. Again, I've got all of your basic stitch videos there for you. I'll put the link up the top there for the blanket stitch if you haven't done it before. One of my favourite stitches and pulls that in. Now, if you didn't want to take the time to sew this stitch, this is double felt now that it's been pressed together, so it won't fray away or anything like that. So you could leave it just plain if you like. I just like that extra detailing. So you can see I'm just going to make my way around just that top edge. See that lovely little binding stitch? And when I've done that, I'm going to go ahead. I've already done one of my little wattle pieces and I'm going to do the other one to match with that same stitch in the same thread. That has all of my blanket stitching complete. You can see that's a lovely finish. And as I said, you don't have to do um, that extra work if you don't want to on those um, pieces also because they are double felt so they won't fray away. The most important thing is that we have to work as a team, which means you do everything I tell you. No, <laughs> you know I like it when, I, when you be creative and, and do your own thing. So definitely do what works for you. So we can put those pieces aside and we're going to have a look at our little beak pieces. So we've got our two sides of our beak pieces. This is our top and this is our base. So we've got a curve at the top and we've got a straight line at the base there. So remember we have fusible webbing on these. So we're going to remove that paper on all of those pieces. And we're using the fusible webbing here just for some extra stability, not for actually fusing. So what we're going to do is put right sides together of our top beak pieces. I'm competing with the birds here today. It's spring and it's all the birds are out in the Australian bush here. So there we go, I've got right sides together. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stitch with a very tiny seam allowance that top curve of that beak. You want to make sure that it's really accurate because we want a nice defined little beak. So I like to overcast that first. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and then just stitch. You only need to stitch it one time. Do make sure you back and forth on the start and the finish there. So that's our top beak. And our lower beak, we sew the straight bottom edge. So it's not the curved edge, it's the straight one. We do exactly the same with that one. And again, make sure you back and forth. I will also overcast that one just so that I get it absolutely um, all lined up when I sew it on the machine. You can turn those little beak pieces through and just roll out those seams. So that's the top of my beak there. So that nice curve at the top. And this is the lower beak, which is our straight line there. So I've got them opened out. I've removed my little tacking stitches so that I can open out those seams. And I know this is small fiddly work, but the rest of the chicken is just such a simple design and it's these little features that really make all the difference. So it's worth this little bit of time. So now we're going to sew our lower beak to our upper beak. Now what you want to do 
is absolutely make sure that your two junctions are met there at the front of the beak. So I'm just going to put my little clamp on there and then we line the sides up each side and I'm going to go ahead and I will sew a tacking stitch, my overcasting stitch, right the way around, really secure that front and line up those sides right down to the other side. So that's, that will be my little beak all sewn up and then I'm going to take it back to the machine and I will machine stitch around that exactly. Now when I'm machine stitching this time, I'm going to use a dark thread. So I'm actually probably going to go for um, a dark brown, something like, possibly even, I could even go for black. That's so that when we turn it through, that line of stitching will actually show up a little bit and it will be dark so it'll give us a nice little mouth line without having to do any extra work. So I'm going to get that one all tacked into place before I stitch it on the machine. Before you turn that beak through, just take the very end off of that point there to remove some of that bulk so that when we turn it through, we're going to be able to get a nice point at the front there and you want to use a knitting needle or something similar to really push that point out. Try not to stretch the edges of the sides of that little beak. Push that point all the way out. And roll out all of those seams. And you should have a nice, neat little beak. You see that little line there now? That's given us that nice line. So that's as, about as sharp as we can make it when we're working with felt. But we do need to work with felt because of its no fray properties. So now we've got that little beak ready and it's ready to go onto our chicken. But what you'll see there at the sides open that those little side seams we've got those little seams showing so we're just going to trim those off those I like to call them bunny ears no bunny ears on our chicken please and we've got that nice and tidy there so that's our perfect little beak ready to go on so let me show you how we place that on our chicken now before I add that beak, the first thing I've gone ahead and done is I've added, you can see in there, a tiny little bit of polyester filling. I've really packed it into the front of the beak and it's really just that front section there. I've taken my wool felting needle to keep that all in there nice and tight and really kept it pushed down to the front there. So I've got quite a space here. And so now I'm ready to add it to my chicken. So what I've done there on the chicken is I've added a little bit of clear craft glue around that edge, the very front edge, don't go up too high and smear that on. So that's just gonna give us a little bit of extra hold and we've got our pins ready and we're going to pin this one into place. So it's just, it'll sit straight over the top. Now don't add your glue to the beak, make sure you add it to the actual hen so that um, when you're adding it, you're not gonna get any smear, go anywhere it shouldn't. So you want to line up your top, remember the curve is the top of the beak. You want to line up that center seam with this center seam and we just pop it straight over the top. And you really want it to go up as far as you can get it. And your first pin should anchor that one beautifully into place straight through that center seam. Then you want to do your sides. Keep that pressure up in those side seams, the edge of that mouth. Those nicely anchored into place and then turn that one up and you should have that lower chin seam lined up 
with your chin seam on your hen. Push that one all the way down too. So now we've got that one very firm in place. You can see I've pulled that up as far as I can. We don't want it hanging off the edge. And then when we go to add our comb, we're going to be lining everything up beautifully. So we are going to be adding a couple of little pull-in nostrils at the top there, but for now, we just want that beak, that glue in there to dry before we stitch that in place. My glue is nicely dried there on that beak and I'm ready to sew this one on. Now there's a few ways that you can do it. You can go ahead and sew it on with a curved needle like we use the curved needle on that back opening there, if you find that easiest. I'm going to sew mine on using my medium doll needle. So you want to make sure that you exactly match your extra strong thread, which is what we're using, got a single strand, exactly match it to the color of your beak. Because we're we are going to be making tiny stitches and they will be seen. So we're just gonna keep it as neat as possible. So I've got my thread with a, a nice big knot at the end and I'm going to just come in underneath that beak straight through and I'm going to come out right there on the side of that little, we'll call it a smile, right there. Pull that one all the way through and that will be, that knot will be hidden in there. So straight away I'm going to dive straight back in because I'm coming out of that beak section I can dive straight back in and I'm going to travel across to the other side of the beak and I'm going to come out the opposite side of that smile just taking some of that beak just the littlest bit so that's just anchored in this side and now we're going to anchor in this side and I'm going to go in again and this time I'm going to come out, aim to come out at the top of the beak. So I'm going to anchor my key points in first. You notice I'm leaving my pins in. I really want to get right on that seam line there. Pull that one through and that will pull in that other side. Then I'm going to dive in right there, straight in that seam line. And I want to come out on the underneath where I've got my pin on the underneath there. There we go. And from that underneath, I've come out at the side again. So basically what this means is that I've got that beak anchored in at the four points, the two sides and the top. Pull that one in nice and tight. And so now I'm just going to make my way around that beak, taking some of the beak each time, traveling across, just at key points, back and forth. So I've gone to the side, now I'm at the top here and I'm gonna dive back in and I'm going to travel down below here. Each time I'm going to make sure that I'm catching some of that beak. And if you keep it nice and neat and the stitch is small, it's really quite a tidy finish. So I'm going to go back in again and come out the opposite side. be hard to show you on camera. You need to get yourself in a really good position to be doing this, something that's really comfortable. And you can see I'm just going to make my way around that whole beak shape until I've caught a little bit of that beak on the edge right the way around. Pulling in each time and because I've exactly matched that colour. 
Don't forget the underside of your beak because I've really matched that colour up well. I don't have too much visible there. There we go. So you can see I can keep, I can even remove those pins now. I tend to leave my side ones in and now I can just keep working back and forth, crisscrossing underneath there and that way that beak is really held into place well. And you can see we're just going to have those tiny little stitches that will be all the way around. You can see where you, where you need to fill in the spaces and I just find that's the easiest way to do it. And there you can see that little beak, that's a nice neat little finish all the way around there. So now we're going to add some little nostrils there. Now you can get your placement for your little nostrils just by using your glass head pins. Just make sure they're even either side. I've made a little mark there each side now. And I've got my doubled strand of eight ply pearl thread that I'm using in black here. I've got a knot in the end. I'm going to come in just at the base of the neck here and I'm going to bring the tip of my needle out right on that mark. And as I've pulled that one through, I've actually gone ahead and that entry point I've made just a little bit larger with my awl so that when I pull it through, that knot is going to sink in. So that knot is in behind now and that should hold nice and firm. So we go back to our needle and I'm just going to dive straight in. So I'm making just a little stitch. I'm going to travel straight across to the other side and come out right on that mark again. There we go, pulled that one through. So that's just my little nostril mark. Then I just match it up on the opposite side. Just going to dive in there again and I can exit out the back of the neck here. There you can see that second nostril there. Make sure you pull it in and give it a little bit of tension. And then you've come out the back of the head and you can go back into that same hole, travel across, do the same thing, back and forth a couple of times and then on your last one you just snip your thread ends. Passing through the back of that head a few times is perfectly suitable for knotting off for this area here. So now we're ready for eyes and our eyes we attach through the wattle piece and that's how we attach the wattle piece so it all gets pulled in. Now I've chosen my eye placement using my teddy bear eye placement pins. They're very handy or you can just use a glass head pin there. And you need to have a good look there at exactly where I have that positioned. So the level of the eye itself sits above the mouth line and it's probably about a centimetre from the corner of the mouth to that little curve of your wattle piece. Make sure that they're lined up on both sides and then you want to go ahead and make your holes. Now I'm using a teddy bear eye, a topaz glass and it has a coil on the back so I need quite a large hole. So I have made that quite big using my knitting needle. I've done that both sides and of course you're going to have to make sure that you've got a nice decent size hole in your wattle piece as well for that all to go through. So once we've got that all done and ready, we just need to get our eyes threaded up. So to get that eye onto my thread, I've got a doubled strand of extra strong thread and I folded it over in the center there. Whether you're using a shank button or a teddy bear eye, it's all the same. I'm passing that folded end through my shank, opening up that loop and taking both those threads back through it. So then my eye is on the end of my double thread. And then I add that, I've got the other one here done, to my large doll needle. So now I'm going to pass my needle through that little wattle piece that's going to hold that there. So my eye is 
nicely in place there. And then I'm going to dive into that hole that I've made and I'm going to come out at the back of the head as central as I can. And pull that one all the way through. And I want to be able to check that I can get that little eye shank pushed in there nice and tight. And that when I pull on that, it's all going to pull in nice and snug. So at the back of the head there, my exit point, I'm going to enlarge that hole. And that's because we're going to repeat the process with the other eye. And we want to come out through that same hole and not catching any of the fabric because we're actually tying these eyes off together but we're tying it into the stuffing, not on the surface of the fabric. So that has the first eye in place. But what I do like to do is just on the underneath here is to add a little bit, just a little bit of clear craft glue because we want to encourage that wattle to sit down here on the cheek. So I've got a little smear of glue there and now I can hold that out and pull that one in absolutely making sure that that coil has popped in. Give that a good tug and you can see that when we pull that in, everything is going to sit nice and flat. Get that pressed into place and those wattles will sit close to the head rather than popping out. So we've got that one in place. We just repeat the process with the opposite eye. Okay, so now I've got both eyes in place and my thread ends are coming out of the same hole. I've tied a preliminary first knot and pulled those in a little. So now all you need to do is squeeze on those eyes and you want to be tying off that knot at the back. Sometimes it's helpful to have some another pair of hands with you and you want to be keeping pulling that one in, squeezing in, adjusting each side until they're nice and even and you've got a nice amount of pull in there. Then you knot that one off, keeping up that tension about four times. When you snip those thread ends, that knot will pop back into the head because it's tied off onto the filling, not to the fabric. And there we go, that has those eyes beautifully in place, both sides, make sure that everything is lined up there. So our final step for our detailing is we're going to add our comb. So the comb we made with that little seam that we can open out. We don't need your help, Jeremiah. And we're going to shout over the frog and you want to line up the center seam and we start with the lower end of the comb so the the long pieces of the comb are at the back do you hear do you hear that second voice it seems like jeremiah has a girlfriend so we're going to need a name for her so i've opened up that seam and i'm really going to start that right where that beak starts and I'm going to put a pin in either side of that seam just to anchor that first section in place. You see how I've opened it out? I'll get my fingers out of the way and you can see right up close there. So that seam is parted, my pin is in either side and I've taken it right down to that beak. Now we want to do that opening up that seam all the way along the top of that head. That seam that's poking out there is, is where you're going to be sewing. It just gives, that, that gives us that little bit of space to sew. It's easy enough to pin it in place because it's right on that seam line. We can see exactly where that needs to go. Just pull those sides out as you go. Keep on pulling out that seam dropping that pin in all the way down to the back of the head there. 
so there you go I hope you can see that see the way I've pinned that each side of that seam open that seam out and starting right down at the top of that beak there right so now we're ready to sew that in place and we're going to sew down each side and we're going to do it in the same way that we did the beak so we're just going to come in from behind the back of the head I'm using my doll needle again and I'm going to bring my needle out through that little seam there right on the edge I've done that same little trick at the back there where I've used my awl to hide that knot and I've come out right on the edge there so now I can go straight in you see how close I am there I can go straight in where that pin is and just travel across to the other side and just as I did with the beak I've come out this side I'm going to take a little here dive in cross over to anywhere along here and make my way back and forth as I do that that whole comb is going to be incorporated into the top of the head and there we go that has our comb beautifully stitched into place you can see there and the only other thing I've done there, and this is completely optional, is I've gone in just with my pastel pencil, soft artist pencil, and I have just created a couple of eye corners there, just either side. I've deepened slightly around those nostrils and the same on the other side, just for a little bit more of a realistic look there. So that is our chicken ready, but she needs her wings. So let's get started on those wings. So as I showed you at the beginning, we've got our two wing pieces here and we've got an underside wing and a top side wing. The top, the underside wing curls up and over the back. And then we've got this little decorative one here. So, and I have used two different fabrics with mine which is just, it means that if you see a little bit of that edging, I get a little bit of red in there, which is bringing in with my colors nicely. And what I've done is I have added a couple of um, pieces of rickrack braid there. Now, anything that you want to do to these wings, particularly this one, you do now. You can embellish it any way you like. You could fill it up with buttons. You could do all sorts of things. Make sure that if you're using buttons or anything, you stay away from that very outer edge because we have to sew that seam. The underside wing, not much of that uh, is exposed. Um, so I just like to use that nice bold print there. So they're very simple to put together and they do have inside either a piece of usable fine wadding or I've just fused a piece of felt onto mine so on the underside piece you just need to add your felt piece so I already have this one sewn up and that's the underside wing so I'm going to be adding my felt piece to what is the underside of this one press that into place you, you want to just cut your um, pieces just a little bit smaller I don't actually I don't actually give you a template for those you just cut them just about seven millimeters smaller than your actual pattern piece with each of those and we only have the felt on one side of the wing so we press that one into place and then we put right sides together as we would here and you have marks on your pattern template that show you where to sew and we're going to be sewing back and forth at your start and all the way around with a four millimeter seam allowance and back and forth at that opening leaving that section open you only need to stitch these one time because they're not going to be stuffed or they won't have any pressure put on them and do the same with the other one you can see there there's the opening for that one and I've stitched right the way around with that four millimeter seam allowance once we've done that we can turn those through and we can give them a good press and turn those little edges under so those openings we can turn those under press them and then we'll be ready for top stitching so there I have my completed second pair of wings there so I've turned those through once I've stitched them given them a press and press those 
hem edges under and then you can see that I've gone around and sewn a top stitch just a couple of millimeters around from the edge and that's closed those openings. So now we can put those wings into place. Now there's a couple of ways that you can do this. You can actually just stitch them into place if you like, um, but I find it easier. Mine is just a shelf sitter. So it's just going to sit on the shelf. It's not gonna get touched and I attach mine with buttons. It's very, very simple. And it also means that you're adding another little um, item to your project. So let me show you how we do that. So the positioning that I have uh, chosen for those is my underwing. I like those to sit up like this and meet basically in the middle. And then the wing that goes over the top, that one sits down. And it just gives you all of this lovely busyness and volume happening there. You could always add a little chick in there. So we can go ahead and get our positioning right. Now you want them to match up either side. So first of all, I make my marks for my button. So I need just a, a coordinating button for this wing here. And I have my mark set there and I've made sure it's the same on the other side. And I also have my marks set ready for my wing section. So what we're going to do is correspond those marks onto our chicken. So I've got those already there. So I know exactly where that's going to sit. So my buttons are going to sit like that and you can check it's going to match up evenly. Make sure you turn it around all different ways, look at it from every angle and make sure that you've got everything right. Once you've done that, we'll, we have to start with the underwing and we're going to start with some extra strong thread and we need a doubled strand and I like to use my doll needle, my medium doll needle. So I'm going to start with my smallest button which I have for the top here for attaching this top part of the wing there. So I'm going to go through one of the holes in my button and I'm going to go through at that mark that I've made. I'm going to travel all the way through. I've got my tail ends hanging and here is my mark on the body. And I'm just going to dive in just one side of it and out the other side of it. Take that one through and then I'm going to go back through the other side of where I have that mark and through the other hole in the button. If I pull that all in, that's got my wing in exactly the right position. Now you can check that before you tie it on. You can see I've got that exactly in the right spot there and all I need to do is tie those two ends off against each other. I tie them off about three times nice and tight keep that tension up and then I take those thread ends back in into the the body of the hen and out and then I can snip my thread in so those thread ends are lost inside the chicken. So then I repeat that process lining up those, those second two spots, this one's down here. You can see that once we add that one, that second button, it pulls that wing up there. And then we're going to do exactly the same thing with that final button through the front there. Just make sure everything's matched up either side. And so there we go. Now that's rain, you can hear. There's a massive storm going on outside, so I'm gonna try and talk over it. What with the frogs and the birds and the, and the weather, it's like National Geographic Channel here today. <laughs> so bear with me. So look, there's our wings all in place now. You can see there that layout is really lovely. Now, you might find that your top wing sits really nicely just like that. If you find it's dropping down because it's only secured by that one button, you can do what I do and just add a couple of little stitches on that apex there right there on the underneath and that will hold it beautifully. Absolutely gorgeous little chicken. Now, you know that I can only offer you patterns here that fit um, easily on an A4, but this chicken makes up absolutely spectacular if you enlarge it and you can enlarge it to actual life size. Beautiful project and it's really lovely for home decor 
just give it to a chicken enthusiast. Start your own chicken ranch. I don't know, but I'm looking forward to seeing them all. I really hope you've enjoyed this one. Well, that was crazy. What a crazy time. We got through it though, didn't we? We got through it. We went through storms and frogs and birds and all sorts. But we made it through it and we ended up with a beautiful little chicken. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, I certainly did and it really was nice to make something up that you could make up just in an afternoon or a morning so I hope you have enjoyed it if you have you could give me a thumbs up uh, that would be absolutely beaut um, I'm looking forward to seeing some of these come up on our Facebook page if you haven't joined our Facebook page come along and join it I'll put the link in the description box below where you can share your Lisa Pay creations and that really does pay it forward because more people get to see more people join our group. Don't be afraid to share um, your creations out in your wider community because we want more people coming along being part of this Pay It Forward community. So thank you everybody for all of your comments and uh, also if you want to join my masterclass which has a slightly more advanced patterns, you can do that. I will also put that, put that link in there below. Everybody keep on talking to me in the comments. Have a fantastic creative week and uh, keep yourselves busy and distracted from all the craziness that's going on in our world. We're safe in our home sewing, aren't we? So let's keep it that way. Let's keep on encouraging others though. So remember to pay all of those good things forward. And until next time, it is Huru from me.